So, if you're like me, you walked away from The Last of Us scratching your head like what the hell is a wood wide web? Don't worry, we've more or less oversimplified exactly what that is and we're going to break it down in this video and then explain why it makes the fungus in the show 1000 times more terrifying than the fungus in the game. So think of it as an information superhighway, a forest all trees, all plants, all funguses. Their roots intersect and interconnect with one another. They share nutrients and they also share information, such as, for instance, if there is a infection in one side of the woods that is killing trees or killing plants in general, that information is relayed to the rest of the trees that are connected to this network, and all of those trees will shut off nutrients and shut off information going to these other plants and funguses and trees so that that localized area would simply die off. It's a self-preservation feature that basically forests and plants share that allow them to basically survive within an ecosystem, especially if there is a drastic change to that ecosystem. Now, in the video game, the primary forms of infection are two things. The first one is a bite from somebody that is already infected. The second one are spores. Now I spoke about spores in another video. We're not gonna go back on a spore tangent, but in the video game, when someone is infected and they reach the end of their infection lifespan, sometimes they will go beyond that lifespan and they will turn into a clicker or they will turn into a, a boomer, a bloater, Feels of bloaters from the from Left 4 Dead. I forget what the last stage is called. The giant thing that rips people's faces open. They will turn into one of those. In the event that they don't turn into one of those, a runner or a stalker will basically find a really dark, damp location. They will simply sit down and then the fungus will grow out of their bodies and attach them to the wall and their bodies will start spewing spores. If you were to land inside of a spore zone inside the game and you did not have a mask, you'd become infected and you would essentially die from that infection. Well, I say die, but you would eventually turn into one of the infected in the video game universe. Now, as we know, they decided to remove spores from the show and they decided instead to go in the direction of tendrils. Now, the more we learn about tendrils, the more terrifying the concept of tendrils become because behind the back of tendrils, they have also attached basically this thought process to the fungus itself, which is the wood wide web exists and the fungus basically uses it for a form of not only self-preservation and a defense mechanism, but also a form and a vector to infect other people. Essentially, the tendrils that grow around the city, if they are fresh, relay information across the entire network. So, and it seems as though the network isn't something that is spread out across the entire country. It's very much localized. If you were to step on a tendril that is extremely fresh, that tendril would react in pain and it would send a signal to nearby infected and those infected would basically come to the location in which the pain was basically sent from. They would arrive at the location of the signal. And if you were still there, you're pretty much dead because it's alerting every single infected in the area that is currently connected to it to go to this one location and kill whatever it is that is threatening its entire system. But there is a caveat. It seems as though for the network to essentially work and this alert system to work, the infected have to be connected to the roots and the tendrils that are growing out of the ground. That connects them to the main system. We see kind of a definition of this when they're all laying out in the sun on the street. And as the sun is passing over, the sun hurts the fungus. And as it passes over them, they feel pain and they rotate and move in pain until the sun passes over them. Then they go right back to being dormant. This is something that Joel also brings up when he's inspecting the tendril that's outside of the building. At first, he walks up to it, he touches it to see if it's cold, then he takes the butt of his gun and he kind of grinds it and it turns to dust and he goes, this thing is dead, it's not gonna send out any signals. That is terrifying because not only does it remove the idea of safety, 
from that the game essentially had which is if you went into an area and you killed all the infected in the area even if it's an outside wooded area or an inside apartment area you didn't have to worry about more infected bum rushing your location because essentially there would be nothing to send out a signal in any way shape or form unless like you blew up the building and you cause like a massive disruption which creates a shockwave that the clickers and everything else in the area can hear in the show that is completely different you can sneak through a building and you can stealthily kill every single infected that you run up to and as you're leaving your hand can accidentally brush one of the tendrils on the wall and like lightning it sends out a beacon to every single infected in the area to converge on this one location that can cut off escape routes that can make a a safe house that you thought was safe suddenly compromised because the infected know that you are inside there is no way <laughs> anybody in this unit it's it's amazing actually that there is still something functioning in some way shape or form like towns because the way in which that information works and the way in which it's automatically triggered there would be hordes just attacking these settlements every single day i don't think they realize just how dangerous they made the infected in the show in comparison to the ones in the game the ones in the show are way more terrifying now that we know that there's basically one central hive mind with a defense mechanism that spreads out for miles underground and anywhere that you kill them that their bodies can touch the ground the tendrils will just work their way up the ground infect that body take the information about what's going on and send out a beacon and then you're just swarmed and you're dead but yeah that's basically a oversimplification of the wood wide web and what exactly is happening in the show it's an information superhighway it's it's a hive mind information superhighway that the tendrils and the cordyceps is basically using to relay information anytime it feels as though it's attacked or it's being threatened in any way shape or form and i cannot wait to see more of that creepy shit happening just going forward to see just how it absolutely crazy and insane this all gets but yeah thanks for watching the video uh subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one peace